Well, before we begin talking about how to sample, we should really ask ourselves, what is a sample? And, um, you know, the term is, it's a metaphor for um, taking a representative piece of a larger group of things. And uh, I, I think the best example I can offer is uh, one that I'm sure many of you have experienced where you go to the grocery store and um, somewhere in that store they have free samples of food that you can taste. For me, uh, I always make a beeline for the cookies, you know, those are in the bakery aisle. And, um, you know, they'll usually have some kind of cookies available for you to sample and you can try them out and see if, if they really um, are what you hoped they would be or, or not. And that can tell you whether or not, um, you know, after you've tasted your sample, if you should buy the box of cookies that's right next to them or if you should just leave them on the shelf and uh, go get something else instead. Well, whenever we quantify anything, we're going to start with a definition of what's called a population. In this case, our boxes of cookies would be our population. It's just a term that um, describes whatever it is that we're going to study in broad terms. We often use it to talk about people. We talk about population statistics and populations of people and things like that. But it's, it's, it's a broader term than that. It's not just meant to describe people. It's meant to describe anything that we're studying. And um, you know, in this case, like I said, it's boxes of cookies and the samples that we get are just little pieces from those boxes of cookies that we can try and we can see how well they match up to what's in those boxes. Now, you know, we're, we're going to take it on faith that the cookies that we're sampling are in fact representative of the cookies that are in the boxes. It is possible that the grocery store could put out much better tasting cookies for us to sample that look the same but they taste a lot better. So we'll buy the, the cookies in the boxes and then go home disappointed. Or it's also possible that the cookies that are you know being sampled could be from a bad batch and they just put them out because they didn't know what else to do with them. And uh, they don't taste as good as the ones in the box and we could make a decision based on the sample that we try in the grocery store that the cookies aren't any good and then we don't buy the ones in the box not knowing what we're missing out on. So. That's the relationship that a sample and a population have, is that a sample is just a piece of that population that we can use to tell us about what that population is like. And how we define a population is really important for any kind of research that we're going to conduct. Um, the more specific our population definition can be, the better our data can be because they can point more specifically to a group that we can really understand and, um, and make sure that we I understand the full limitations of, of studying them. So I'm going to assume in, in this series of lectures that you remember some things from the prerequisite statistics class you should have taken before you took marketing research. Um, but I'm also going to assume that you don't remember a lot of it real well. So what I'm, one of the things I'm going to assume that you probably remember but don't really understand is that in order to have a population that you need to have a list of all of the people that are in that population in order to draw a sample from it. And uh, you might get a little confused and think that in order to have a population you have to have a list. Well that is true, you do need to be able to uh, have a population with distinct uh, individuals within that population that you can sample. But that list is usually called something else. We, we actually call that a, a sampling frame or sample frame. And the idea of a sample frame is that we uh, produce a list of um, the population that's near perfect as possible so that we have some ability to determine who's going to be in our ultimate sample. And that sample frame, uh, it, is, it isn't always going to be perfect. So let's say, for example, that we're going to conduct a study with all currently enrolled SIUE students. Okay, um, There is a list on campus that's being kept by the registrar about all currently enrolled students. It has their name, you know, when they enroll, when they're going to graduate, and all kinds of other personal information about them. Um, so that list does exist. And that list is, is not our population. That list is our sample frame. The population is our definition, all currently enrolled SAUE students. The, the, the list that we're going to have may or may not be a completely accurate representation of that population because the list might not be current to the precise moment in which we're doing a study. It might include people that um, are dropping out but haven't yet dropped out. It might include people that um, 
you know, um, are, are on the list uh, and they didn't actually enroll in classes, they withdrew, but they still, for some reason, are on the list. They might include mistakes, it might include, um, you know, uh, people who are alumni who just weren't taken off the rosters for whatever reason. There could be all kinds of people on that list that don't belong on that list. And there could, hopefully, not, but there could be people that aren't on the list that should be on the list. Pe people that are going to class that think that they're enrolled and it turns out that they're not. So the reality is that the population, which is our definition of who we're studying, and the sample frame, which are, are, is our list of as many members of that population as possible, may not line up 100%. There may be areas where the population has people that aren't on the sample frame, or vice versa, where the sample frame, the list that we have, has people on it that aren't really in our population. And the difference between what a population is defining and what a sample frame is listing is what we call sample frame error. And ideally, we want to reduce that as much as possible, but um, depending on the kind of list that we're drawing, it can be difficult. Um, now with SIUE enrolled students, we're going to assume that we're going to have a pretty low level of sample frame error because that registrar keeps really good records. They have to. Um, but let's say that we want to interview general consumers in the St. Louis area and our sample frame it, for that, we have to have a list somewhere that we can go to. We, you know, otherwise it's just, who do you know? You know, so we have to have a list and um, that list is going to probably be a phone book or some kind of registry or something like that. Well, just think about the phone book for a minute. I mean, I'm not listed in the phone book because I don't have a landline. I have a cell phone and so there's no reason for me to be listed in the phone book. And many people aren't listed in the phone book. They either choose not to be listed or they're not listed because they don't have a, a landline phone or um, you know they just haven't gotten around to updating their records so they can be in a phone book. So a phone book is a really terrible way to um, conduct a um, a study using that as your sole sample frame if your intention is to reach consumers who also don't have landline phones and who aren't in the phone book. You need a, a better list than that or else you're going to be uh, and you're going to be in a lot of trouble. You're going to have a lot of sample frame error. So again, you know, we have to think really carefully when we're defining a population, what does it mean and how are we going to get to the people that are in that population in order to sample them and that's where what our sample frame is going to be used for. When we are conducting a survey with population, we really have two choices in how we can conduct a survey. One is that we can take a census. A census is a word for interviewing everybody within a population. And, you know, uh, our, it, it, it is a difficult task. Our own government in the United States does it every 10 years. Um, they do their best to reach everybody. They don't reach everybody, I'll tell you truthfully. There are people that uh, decline to participate and uh, just even though they're lawfully supposed to, they just don't participate. There are people that kind of live off the grid who uh, don't participate. There are illegal immigrants who don't participate. There are people living in our borders, some of them even citizens, that don't participate in the census. And so the census, um, the U.S. census, is as close to good, perfect information as we can get, but it's not 100%. There, are, there is a little bit of room for error there, although it's teeny tiny. The other thing that we can do is we can draw a sample. And again, this goes back to my example of get, trying a little piece of cookie to figure out what the whole box of cookies is going to taste like. And that's what sampling is. Now, I'm going to show you this chart here. And we're going we're gonna to talk about some of these different terms. So I've already covered population, sample frame, and sample. And this graphic here, this comes from your textbook. And the graphic um, shows the, you know, first of all, the circle is the population and the, uh, the, the big rectangle in the middle is the sample frame. So you can see that the population is a little bit bigger and uh, has a lot of area that's not necessarily covered by the sample frame and that the sample frame itself kind of extends down below the circle and it has some area that's not covered by the population. That's our sample frame error. The sample itself is this little uh, oval that sits kind of towards the bottom, the green oval towards the bottom, and um, the sample is just a piece of that population and you'll notice it also delves a little bit into the sample frame where the population and the sample frame don't overlap so that that is possible to happen. <clears throat> There's a few other terms one of those is sample unit and a sample unit is whatever it is that we're trying to study so if we're doing a human a study with human beings uh, one human being e equals one sample unit okay so um, if, you're, if you're doing a um, 
study with batches of screws, then one batch of screws might be a sample unit. It just depends on what it is that you're studying. Um, but generally with human beings, our sample units are human beings, or we also call them respondents. Uh, we talked about sample frame error, which is the difference between the population and the sample frame. And then there's also this thing called sample error. And um, what sample error is, is um, it's error that is caused by the sampling method that we use. We're going to talk about it much more in Lecture Series 7. And we're going to touch on it a little bit in Lecture Series 6. But sample error is a problem. Um, it, it's, it's a problem you can't really do anything about unless you're willing to conduct a census. Um, but you can minimize it by conducting the, the appropriate sampling method with the appropriate sampling size. So that's as much as you need to know about it for right now. So before we move on, let me offer an example of some of these terms that we're talking about and try to help you to understand how this all works together. So let's say that what we're going to do is we're going to conduct a study on campus at SIUE and we want to understand how much of our SIUE student population is overweight or obese according to body mass index or BMI. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a sample of 1,200 students, we're going to measure their height and weight and calculate their BMI. Now this is a, this is a pretty serious undertaking, okay? Having 1,200 people do anything takes time and energy, so we have to make sure that if we're going to do this, we're going to do this right. So let's say that what we do first of all um, is we just go to the muck one day, we set up and we just start recruiting people and, to, and, and we just keep going until we get 1,200 BMIs on paper. So just everybody that walks by, we get them to come over, we measure their height, their weight, we write their BMIs down on paper. So after 1,200 people have gone through this, we've got a lot of data and we've probably got a pretty good idea of what the average BMI is. Um, the problem is we don't know if that sample is any good. We don't know if that sample actually matches what our population of students uh, are like or not. For one thing, we didn't do any screening. We didn't do anything to ensure that these people were actually students. They might be visiting campus, they might be alumni, they might be faculty, they might just be people that work at the muck or that are just hanging out at the muck. We don't know. We just pulled 1,200 people aside and, and took their measurements. So any statistics that we're going to draw can describe that sample, but they cannot describe the population of students uh, that we're trying to measure. So let's say we scrap that plan and we start over. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start recruiting people at the MUC. Um, and we're going to have a list of all current students uh, that we can access, probably on a computer. And before we take any measurements, what we're first going to do is have them present their ID and we're going to confirm that they are indeed students. And now the good news is that as we take those 1,200 measurements, um, we're going to have data from 1,200 students. We're going to have, have ensured that we only have students. But we still have a problem with our results because we don't know if those 1,200 students are representative of all the students or not. It could be that there's an event going on at the muck that day. Like um, It could be that they have a uh, skinny people eat free day at the muck, you know, where um, all the skinny people come in there and, and, and so we're going to have lower than average BMIs. Or it could be that Weight Watchers is having a meeting upstairs, like a big meeting where they're inviting students from all over the place to come in and uh, participate in a Weight Watchers event. So we're going to have people that are a little heavier than average. Um, it's also possible that the types of students that hang out at the muck are different from students who don't. You know, when I went to school, I was a commuter. I, I didn't go to the muck very often. Um, I didn't live on campus, so I didn't need to. Students that live on campus might have different um, uh, BMI levels on average than students that commute. Um, it's also possible that students who care about their health the most bring their meals to campus and spend their free time over at the gym instead of at the muck. It's possible. I'm not saying it happens, but I'm saying it's possible. So we don't know what this sample can tell us about the population because we still don't know if our sample is representative. So what we need to determine is how we can draw a sample and ensure that it's representative of the population that we're studying, which is SIUE students, so that we don't need to interview everyone, but we can still talk about the population at large. Get it? At large? BMI? Okay. Anyway, fortunately, the field of statistics, which uh, is first and foremost about probability, um, it gives us a really great option for drawing this sample and allowing us to do so. So if we can find some way to ensure that we're selecting a random sample of students so that every member of the student population has an equal chance of being selected, 
Then, here's a really cool thing, we don't need to even talk to 1,200 students. We can draw a sample of any size, although we generally want it to be at least 30 people. Um, for reasons I'll explain in another lecture. But then we, we can draw a sample of any size and we can take what we learned from that sample and use the findings to describe the entire population. And what that is, is that that's a sample where we have found a way to ensure that um, everyone is represented through a, a, a process of randomness. And we're going to call that a probability sample. Now we'll talk about that in, in, a, in, a, in a future lecture in this series, but keep that term in mind because that, that term is really important. If people in the group have an equal chance of being chosen, it's a probability sample. And that means that we can take a sample of any size and project it out to that population. So what we want to avoid when we're uh, conducting research is we want to make sure, first of all, that we have a population that's clearly defined and that's not so vague that we don't know what we're, what we're measuring. And then we want to make sure we have a sample, sample frame that is um, as close to the population as possible and not um, you know, incomplete or scattershot or uh, with lots of bad information on it. If, what, if we can make sure that we have a good population definition and a good sample frame, then we can use a process like random selection to ensure that we can draw an appropriate size sample and get the statistics that we actually want. And we, we can avoid all of those problems that come with drawing a sample non-randomly.